Good morning, everyone. Let's stand together and worship this beautiful Sunday morning. Look to the person beside you, just give them a fist bump, high five, hug, or everything in between, all right? Just tell them you're so glad to have them at church today. Let's sing this morning. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when found in the desert place, or walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name. The Lord, blessed be a glorious name. Blessed be your name when the sun is shining down on me, when the world's all that it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering. Blessed be your name. Every blessing. Every blessing you pour out of turn back to your praise. When the darkness closes, dear Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name. say, so I don't have to make you do that again. Fantastic. Hey, I'm Brother Keith. I'm the new senior pastor at First United Methodist Church in Benton, Arkansas, and I am glad to be here this morning to be with you all, and uh, I tell you, give me a moment because my head's still swimming as I'm learning my new routine and what I'm supposed to do. I'm just glad I did not call this Mount Homebirth Methodist Church, okay? <laughs> so uh, just to kind of give you an idea, but at least there's two, there's two words there, so it, you know, it kind of breaks it up a little. But we are glad to see you this morning, glad you have joined us for worship today, and if you're out watching over the internet, we're glad you're with us too. And just a few announcements to make this morning in the life of the church. Uh, there is a, there'll be a trustees meeting uh, tomorrow evening here at the church, if you're on that, uh, woo, if you're excited, I know, uh, but that is tomorrow evening. If you'd uh, like to know more about what the trustees do, just call us at the office, we'll tell you. There will be also a COVID task force meeting this Wednesday at uh, 6.30. That's a Zoom meeting. And, uh, and I know, I know, I know, uh, we have concerns as we watch all of this. And uh, uh, so we definitely, are, our thoughts and prayers go out, uh, especially for our sister churches that have been uh, deeply affected by this. 
uh, more so here lately. So uh, I know Asbury, you know, I'm at this church in Little Rock, definitely praying for them. So um, anyway, we are talking about that, and we want to remind people, please, if you feel comfortable wearing your mask, more comfortable with that in church, uh, please, please, please wear it. And also uh, to know that uh, there's no shame as well as watching it online, too. So we're uh, either way, in any way that we can right now, reach out and bring ministry and bring comfort. Uh, so with that said, also, uh, there will be at 10 o'clock today, right after this service, we're going to have a meet and greet time and uh, gather and uh, kind of a little informal type uh, service of recognizing the transition of one senior pastor to a new senior pastor thing. So we hope you can hang around for that at 10 o'clock. So that'll be right here in the CLC. So I hope to see you in that moment as well. Now, we're also collecting paper of Ralph Bunch Back to School. And we do, uh, we collect notebook paper. And uh, we're looking for 900 packs of that, I think. So if you would like to bring all 900, we'd appreciate it. So uh, anyway, uh, just bring it out into the church office or bring it to the uh, uh, back of the church here. We'll make sure to get it to the right place. All right. Whew. I think, I think, I think I have covered all of the announcements of this morning. Uh, I can't think of anything else that I need to announce. So I'll hand it back off to you right now. Guys, there we go. My mic's off. We have a few new faces in our praise band this morning. This guy to my stage left, the pastor's son, Josh, or Joshua Dotson, on the keys. And we have Miss Heather Bird over here to my right. So I'm thankful they were adding more people. That I know some of the rest are going to come back shortly, so we're going to have a full band so you guys can stop hearing me sing by myself and, you know, all that. Sing this morning. And hands so, up, and hearts so open, wide as the sky. And we lift you high, and we lift you high. And hands up, our hearts so open, wide as we cry. God, we lift your name high. Let's sing that again. And hands up. Hearts open wide as the sky. We lift you high, oh, we lift you high. And hands up, hearts open wide as we cry. God, we lift your name high. And all the other names fade away. All the other names fade away. Oh, and still there's only you. And all the other names fade away. And Jesus, take your place. And Jesus, take your place. Let all the other names fade away. Let all the other names fade Still there's only you And all the other names fade away Jesus, take your place Jesus, take your place Hands up, hearts open Wide as the sky We lift you high We lift you high And hands up so then, why as we cry? God, we lift your name high. And our God, we lift you high. We lift you high. And hands up, God, we lift your name high. Our God, we lift you high. Oh, we lift you high. God, we lift your name high And our God, we lift you high We lift you high 
hands up, God will lift your name high. Our oh, God will lift you high. Oh, will lift you high. Hands up, God will lift your name high. Let all the other names fade away. the names fade away and still there's only you and all the other names fade away it's Jesus take your place Jesus take your place and all the other names fade away let all the other names fade away Oh, until there's only you, let all the other names fade away. It's Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. My name is... Nice job, Tom. I heard you from everybody. I like that. My name is Reverend Walt Garrett. I'm one of the associate pastors here at Benton First United Methodist Church. And on behalf of our senior pastor and our associate pastors and every single member of the church, welcome again. Let's take it on an attitude of prayer. Get in a comfortable spot, either if you join us in this place or online. Put your hands, sit your bottom, get your back and your shoulders in a place where you can go. And be present just the way you are with the Lord. The Lord be with you. Let's pray. God of crazy, awesome love. God who left the 99 to find us, to find me. God who searched the world when I was lost. God, who will not stop furiously loving me and you and all of us. You are the one we come today to praise, to lift our voices to, sometimes not as good as we'd hope. Sometimes we come dragging in that bag, that struggles that we've dealt with over the week. And whatever we come in with today, Lord, let us lift it up to you right now in these next few moments. We share that is heavy upon our hearts and our shoulders. Lord, you continuously chase us. When we turn away and focus on those things that seem to bombard us from every single side, you still are there beside us, behind us. And when we look, your love, your joy, and your peace is waiting on us. So, Lord, let us be present here, be willing to accept and turn around yet again that love that chased us and continues to go with us, that leads everything else aside to be with us, with you, with me, with all of us. And let this prayer, and let our voices, and let our praise be to the one loves me and absolutely loves you. In Jesus' most precious and powerful name, we pray and all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. Let's stand together to worship one more time this morning.
speak to me when the silence steals my voice you understand me you understand me and come to me in the valley of unknowns and you understand me you understand me you understand me God, you understand me So I throw my cares before you My doubts and fears don't scare you You're bigger than I thought you were You're bigger than I thought So I stop all negotiations With the God of all creation You're bigger than I thought you were Bigger than I thought you were And I believe And I believe But I help my own belief You understand me You understand me Help me reach the faith that's underneath. You understand me. You understand me. You understand me. God, you understand me. So I throw all my cares before you. My doubts and fears don't scare you. You're bigger than I thought you were You're bigger than I thought So I stop all negotiations With the God of all creations You're bigger than I thought you were You're bigger than I thought you were yeah. my favorite part of the song. He simply says, I will rest in the Father's hands. Let's sing it today, church. I will rest in the Father's hands. You leave the rest in the Father's hands. And I will rest. Yes, I will. In the Father's hands. Leave the rest. In the Father's hands, Lord, and I will rest. I will rest in the Father's hands. Leave the rest in the Father's hands, Lord, and I will rest. I will rest in the Father's hands. Leave the rest in the Father's hands. So I throw all my cares before you and My doubts and fears don't scare you You're bigger than I thought you were You're bigger than I thought So I stop all negotiations With the God of all creations You're bigger than I thought you were you're bigger than I thought you were. You're bigger than I thought you were. You're bigger than I thought you were. Amen. You may be seated. Our scripture today is uh, coming from Luke, the 15th chapter, the NIV specifically, if you like to know what, uh, what version of the Bible it is. But let's listen closely to God's word. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. 
Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Our supposed woman has 10 silver coins and loses one. Doesn't she light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost coin. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And my deepest apologies. I realize I forgot to send the kiddos to a children's church. <laughs> so, I don't know, just the, the running by was kind of sweet. I liked it. So, uh, anyway, because uh, they're so excited to be here. You know, what if, we, what if adults, we acted that way? That would be, no, they would probably come get us if we acted that way, wouldn't they? So, uh, anyway, would you, would you bow your heads with me? Let's just have a brief word of prayer before I preach, okay? God, we are grateful for your word today, and, and Lord, we pray that the words that I speak and the meditations of our hearts together, that they're acceptable in your sight. Lord, let, let your name be proclaimed today. Let, let your word be heard through all of this. Let me get out of the way. This is not me. Let this be all of you, God. We, we lift this up to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, you know, speaking of kids, I like to play this little uh, trick on them. And, you know, you know, sometimes in churches we'll do children's sermons and things like that. And honestly, sometimes in children's sermons, they make better sense than the adult sermons do, right? Yes, they do. And they do it in five minutes. Um, but what I like to do is I'll, I'll come up to the children, and I've done this to, even to some adults before, and I'll say, okay, so I have, I have one dollar here, you know. I have one dollar here. This is a well-loved dollar. Can't you tell? It's one of those. And uh, it, it, it goes in our uh, affectionate, we call the beach bucket. It's been down in there. That's used, we used to do the collect change. And anyway, you probably do something like that when you go on vacation. So, so you go and you put it down in there, and that one's been well loved. So you have your $1. And so you've got your $1. That won't buy a whole lot anymore, will it? And then I ask the kids, and I have 50 cents here. And, of course, they go, whoa, you know, because they'd never seen a 50-cent piece before or a half dollar. Now, when I was growing up, these were very, fairly common to use, uh, but, you know, not overly common, but decently common more than today. You don't see these too often. But the kids get it. I'll say, well, which would you prefer? Would you prefer this dollar here, uh, which you could buy a dollar worth of stuff, or would you like 50 cents? Now, they're not dumb. And they know the monetary value, in a sense, and they know that, for the most part, a dollar will buy more than 50 cents worth, just the face value of that. Now, they may want the 50 cent piece just because it's neato and different and not something that they normally see, right? But if they're counting their pennies and really understanding what's going on, they're going to say, yeah, give, give me the dollar. I'll take that because it's worth more. It'll buy more than that 50 cents will. In fact, good luck buying anything for 50 cents these days. But then I tell you that this isn't a normal 50 cent piece. This is a 1964 silver piece. So then its base value is really like 10 bucks. So now it gets a little bit different because this dollar is actually truthfully worth less than this 50 cents. Now, if I go into the store and I go to use these, I'm only going to get 50 cents for it from the store person or from the cashier, that kind of worth. But if I were to take it to a collector, they would know. And in fact, there's one out there I read this morning, I don't have this one, uh, that has a special mark on it that's worth $1,200, a 50-cent piece. So the value is really eye in the eye of the beholder in a way, isn't it? And, and, and who knows what the value is? I'm going to run into that mic stand. I can see it already. So I'm going to lay this right here, over here, so I don't lose it. So the, our value and what we understand is valuable does change over time. And what we might look at something and say, this is worth this amount of money or this amount of whatever, it might be different to each person, right? 
in my office normally is a commentary set. Now, right now, if you walk by my office, I, I promise I am happy to be here. I just, my books are stuck in storage, and I'm going to get them out. Uh, and uh, thankfully, preachers do a lot of stuff these days over the, uh, over, you know, the computer. You know, my commentary set, the main one I use is actually on my laptop, thank goodness. But there is a commentary set that I absolutely love, and it sits on my shelf normally, and it is an ugly set. Oh my gosh, it's like, it's, it's bound in the, the light gray, kind of bluish denim bounding, you know what I'm talking about? And it's faded from years of use, and, and they're worn, and it's tattered, and, and when you open the, the pages, they're, they're starting to fall out a little bit, and they've got that, but it does have that great old book smell, you know what I'm talking about? Oh yeah, for those of you who love old books. But from the outside, you look at this commentary set, and you say, that is worthless. It's not worth anything at all. But to me, they're priceless. And the reason why is they're my father's set. And within this worn out, bound copies of William Barclay's commentaries, you will find where he has underlined them and highlighted in them and, and written in his hieroglyphics, also known as his handwriting, his comments. I write in the same hieroglyphics, just so you know. And, and when I open them, I think of my father. Not only my father here on earth, but my heavenly father. So these are very precious to me, right? We all have, we all have those things in our life that someone would look at it and say, well, that's not really worth a whole lot. But to us, they're very valuable. They are. You see, God, God has a different understanding when it comes to value. In the world sense, in understanding, when we look at something like this in a normal standard, we've got a 50-cent piece and we've got a $1 bill, and we can look at something and say, this is worth more than this. But truthfully, it is all a speculation. But yet, God has a different understanding on what is valuable in life, and it's not the monetary things that are out there. It's not the things we can buy with our money and the stuff that we can put in our home. In this story that we listen to, this beautiful story of how the shepherd, when he loses one sheep, one sheep wanders off on his or her own. And yet, instead of looking back and saying, it's okay, I've got 99 more, I'm in good shape, I can let the one go away. He doesn't do that in this story. Instead, the shepherd says, let me go look for the one that is lost. So to the shepherd, that one is priceless. It doesn't devalue the other 99 that are out in the safety of the group, but yet it shows the value of all where God desires to go out and to seek after all of his people. And we are all his. We're all God's. God loves us and sees us as priceless. And, and honestly, I, I know what we say sometimes. Well, you know, they wandered off on their own. Let them come back on their own. That kind of thing. You know, it makes me think about, this is a story off the cuff a little bit. I do that occasionally, so be ready. I was standing at Walmart one day, and... Uh, uh, I was standing at the, you know how they do their bathrooms, they're just those open doors, basically, and some of them, and there's the water fountains or whatever that are between them, and I was standing there one day, and there was an older gentleman sitting there in one of those little motorized chair things that Walmart has, and I don't know, we were just both kind of standing there, I don't know why I was standing there, but I was, and all of a sudden, uh, this particular person, this lady, runs by me and runs right into the men's bathroom and disappears. And I looked over at the gentleman in the chair, and she go, he goes, well, she'll figure it out eventually. <laughs> but part of me wanted to go in and rescue her, and, and we're kind of that way sometimes. We think, well, you know, they got themselves in this mess. Let them figure it out and come out. And I've done that before, too. We've all done that, walked into the wrong bathroom. Oh, yeah. Lots of great stories about that one. Another time. 
But we'll say that. Well, let them figure it out on their own. But we don't see that in the Scripture. Instead, we see God seeking and going after this one that had wandered away and that was lost because that's how much God loves this one and sees them as priceless and precious. Because sometimes, yes, friends, as sheep, we make some bad decisions. We wander off. We end up in lonely places and spaces in our life, whether we made the decision to put ourselves there or we didn't. We find ourselves. In those situations, all of us have been that one that has been on the outside before in some form or fashion. So, we see how God sees each and every one as precious and valuable and priceless. And it goes after. And not only does this does this God go after, this shepherd go after? Not only are we talking about a God that sought, it is a God who brought. Not only a God that seeks, but of one that takes the sheep and puts it on God's shoulder and carries the sheep back to the fold. He says, I love you and I want you to be part of this group. Because you are. That is the powerful story in this, of redemption. You know, we've all made those bad choices sometimes and found ourselves in difficult situations. I think of one time when Lori and I had wandered off on the trail one time at Lake Catherine. And Lake Catherine has a little trail. Y'all are very familiar with that here. You know, in other churches I tell that story and they go, eh, maybe I know that. But here you're closer, much closer to it. And you know the little waterfall trail. It's only 1.6 miles round trip. It's not too terrible. Uh, I have fallen off of it once before, but that's another story for another time. And, uh, and I was saved at that time, too. I mean, that's somebody literally rescued me. It's a different story. But So Lori and I were out on this trip, and we went to the waterfall, and we, 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 came, we were coming back, and we thought, you know what, Let, let's be adventurous, and let's take this other trail we've never taken before. We, had, we didn't look at the map. Who needs a map? Right? And so we get on this trail, and we find ourselves on this trail, and then after we've gone up and down some hills for an hour or so, we realize that we may have bitten off more than we could chew. We have no water, because this was going to be a 1.6-mile trip, you know. Oh, I forgot to mention she was really pregnant, right? <laughs> and we got to a point where we really did, we were lost. We were lost. Now, we knew the trail was a loop and that we would eventually end back up. But the question was, do we go back the way we came? Or do we go back the other way and, and just hope if we keep tra trucking, we're going to hit to the right end? And this is not some sort of sadistic eight-mile trail that's out there. And it doesn't exist, by the way. It's only 3.6 to 4 miles total. So what do we do? What do we do? So we decided to travel on, and we did, and we eventually came to the end of the trail, and we found ourselves, and the name of the trail, of course, is the Dam Trail. That's what it's called, because it goes up, and apparently you can see the dam or whatever from there, and that kind of thing. And so it was a, you know, it was a very emotional and powerful experience, and we were glad that we had accomplished it, but we had made some bad decisions in doing so. No matter the decisions we've made to put ourselves in those positions in life, God still loves us. God still seeks us, God still values us, God sees us as precious and priceless. We need to know this, and we need to preach this and proclaim this more and more and more, because unfortunately people think many times that they have got to clean themselves up in order to come to church, or they've got to be a certain way, or got to do this, or got to do that. And the truth is, is that God says, let me come and carry you in. Let me love you. You know, real church growth happens. A healthy church happens by relationships one at a time. For us as Christians to live out that call that God has shown us in this message, to be willing to go out and to build relationships with folks. To be able to reach out and to show the love of God no matter where people are or who they are. Because from the outside, somebody might say, they don't mean much. But God looks at them and says, that's not true. They're priceless. You know, that's a lesson for us to learn individually. When we think that we are of no value to God, you need to remember that we are. You know, next Sunday, I'll talk about my call story. 
and share about how even in the messiness of life, God doesn't call the perfect. He doesn't. You look at the Bible. You see the people God has called, and they're really messed up. The only perfect one was Jesus. God doesn't call the perfect. Instead, he equips us with his perfect love. He calls out to each one of us and he says, come, go with me, let me love on you. And let us rejoice in the very presence, my presence and the presence of one another. We need to be willing to share that message more and more as a church. To let people know that all are welcome. No matter where you are along the trail or where you found yourself, God still loves you. God wants you. God values you. God desires you. And we too should carry that same value in our hearts, not only for others, but for even ourselves. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you for your word today. We pray that it continually reminds us of how priceless and how wonderful, how much you value us because we are your creation. So Lord, we ask that as we continue through with this service that we do so with hearts that rejoice because you carry us in and carry us through life for you are our Savior. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Thank you, Brother Keith. That was his, that was one of, I'm going to share a little story. That was his ordination sermon. That was the sermon he, he said so that he could be ordained. We get why he's ordained, right? That was excellent. Thank you, Brother Keith. It is our call to respond in faith to the word preached. So let us rise and join with one voice and with one heart in the Apostles' Creed. will be found on your screen here in a moment. Hey, there we go. I don't know if you remember at the After Easter series that we uh, taught about the Apostles' Creed. And remember how loud we proclaimed the faith? Well, the whole Dotson clan is here. And because at 10 o'clock we're going to welcome Keith. Lori, and the entire family. So let's, with one voice and one heart, remember how loud we proclaimed the Apostles' Creed during that season. Let's do it again today. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, the third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. It's now our time. The time when we uh, offer up our, our offering. And now I know that this is at the back as far as where we place our gift set, but this is a giving of the heart. When we give to God, we give of ourselves, and we do so in a song as well, as I understand. Receive this offering prayer. Let's pray for just a moment. God, we are grateful for the gifts that you have blessed us with. Lord, remind us that we are called to use them for your kingdom, to grow your kingdom, to go out and proclaim your good news. And yes, to let the world know they they are precious to you. We are precious to you. So, Lord, we ask you to bless our gifts, our offering before you, not only in monetary, but of our heart, most importantly. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sing. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your glorious name, 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Thank you all for being with us in worship today, and we're so glad that you spent this time. You've taken the time to be here today, to come into this holy space, and, and to be in God's presence. If you have any questions, or you need anything, or a prayer, or anything, don't hesitate to reach out to, to myself, or any of our leadership and ministry team here at First United Methodist Church. We'd love to visit with you, and we'd love to pray with you. So with that in mind, I'd like to lift up a benediction, a closing prayer. Let's pray. God, again, we are grateful that we've been able to be here, to be in this space to proclaim your love and to receive your love. God, we pray that today is the pinnacle of our week, that this will send us out to go and to serve you faithfully, to take your message of love and redemption to the world, the one in 99, the fact that everyone we see on the street today or at the stores that we go to, they are loved by you no matter who they are. So Lord, let us go with this message in our heart as we sing your praises in all that we do. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all for coming. And worship starts in about 10 minutes. I think we are going to have some coffee or if you need a bathroom break, we'll start in about 10 minutes.